Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10, and it reads, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash, next double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the one that taught us the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere items. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regardless of people here, forbear one day closer, Israel. Sons of strangers, meaning these heathens, are going to build up our walls just like we built America. Sweat, blood, and tears. These heathens, man, are going to build up our walls. They're going to build our kingdom, man. They're going to build our palaces. All the above, man. That new heaven, that new earth, right? That new heaven, that new earth, right? This is the king shall minister unto thee. The king shall minister unto thee. Let's read that again. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. We're going to work them. We're going to work them day and night. This is the promise. From the heavenly father to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 patriarchs, the Israelites, right? That these heathens are going to serve us, right? Just like we serve them, but, but double, double. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their king shall minister unto thee. Just look something quick through the spirit. For in my wrath, I smote thee. But in my favor, have I had mercy on thee. Therefore, thy gates this is talking about when we get in the kingdom, right? Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Because we're going to be ruling. There's not going to be any need to fear. The Lord says he's going to give us rest from our hard bondage. You see? And the labor is working and toiling and things of that nature. The Lord says he's going to give us rest from all that, right? Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. And they shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought, yeah, with their forces, their substance. You see, the gold, the cattle, the precious stones, uh, the best of fabrics. You see, the virgin daughters, and that their kings may be brought for the nation. Because you got these heathens talking crap right about now. We're not going to serve those Negroes, those blacks, those Native American Indians, those, those Latinos. We're not serving them for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. You, do you understand that? Shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The nations that don't serve us, look, because we're going to be able to control the elements. We're going to be able to control the rain. Your crops, you don't want to serve us. Your crops are not going to grow. You see, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Jerusalem is going to be the place to be. Israel, come man, our streets are going to be paved with gold, man. This, this is what the future looks like for us, man. This is what our future looks like, Israel. Do you not hear what the, the scriptures are saying? Look, the sons also of them that afflicted thee, you see, shall come bending unto thee. See, look, look the people that afflicted us, they're going to come bending soon, come in, all right? They're, they're, they're going to be our property. We're going to own them. We're going to possess them. The sons also of them that afflicted thee. Who afflicted us? These heathen nations starting off with sleazy eat shall come bending unto thee and all they that despise thee they hated us right shall bow themselves down at the sole of thy feet this is this is what the future is going to be like for these heathen nations right and they shall call thee the city of the lord the zion the monument from the hebrew word to zion which means monument that's what the word zion mean 
of the Holy One of Israel, because they're not doing that now. They're calling us black. The proverbs and bywords right about now, black, Latino, Native American, Indian, all this crap, right? But in that day, they're going to call us Zion, that monument of the Lord, right? He says, uh, look, whereas thou has been forsaken and hated, tell me, tell me that don't fit us right about now. So that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Bear with me. Th this is coming, Israel, the joy of many nations, the creme de la creme. All right, we was created to be the, the best nation on the face of the earth. We're just going through what we're going through is punishment. We're going through punishment right about now, right? It says, Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, meaning these heathen nations, right? And shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And, and thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer. The mighty one of Jacob, the mighty one of Jacob, man. For brass will I will I bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver. Man, we're gonna have the substance, man. And for wood, brass, and for stone, stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine ex exactors righteousness. Right? Violence, look, violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Let you know that we ain't home yet. Because ain't violence over there in the land of Israel. The Lord said when he take the true biblical Hebrew Israelites back to that land, there won't be any violence anymore in Israel. This is what's coming. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. There ain't going to be no war. There ain't going to be no bombing. No shooting. No looting. Look, look, nothing but peace, man. You see? Nothing but peace. Wasting no destruction within thy borders. Ain't nobody going to be dropping no bombs on us, man. Ain't nobody going to be coming up against the Hebrew Israelites in that day. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord your howl. Through his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy power, thy glory. Thy son shall no more go down. We, we will never be taken out of rulership ever again, all right? We're going to reign forever for all eternity. Thy son shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. We're going to always have this knowledge, right? This wisdom, this understanding, right? For the Lord Yahweh shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Well, look, no more warning, no more mourning, man. Thy people also shall be all righteous, because we're going to have the laws in our inward parts which will never go off again. Not a negative thought or anything ever again, Israel. All our people, the two thirds are down inside, they're going to come back through the loins of the elect, the one third. All our people are going to be righteous in that day. Thy people also shall be all righteous. No more gang banging, no more selling drugs, no more thoughts, no more whores, no more twerkers, tweakers, boppers, boopers. You see, no more false prophets. They shall inherit the land forever. We will never get taken out of our homeland ever again. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Because remember, the Lord said he was happy when he created Israel. You see, a little one shall become a thousand. Because it's going to be enough sex in the kingdom, man. All right? A little one shall become a thousand. Remember Isaiah 4 and 1? Seven women. But that number seven just means completion. You can have as many wives as you want to and concubines, right? A little one shall become a thousand. Because the one third got to bring the two third back. They're down this side. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. You see? So, so everything's set up, man. Everything's going to go according to the plans of Yahweh Bashimi I got one more. It's, it's almost over that new heaven and that new earth. 
It's right around the corner. You just got to hold on. I want to read this right quick. These nations are going to serve us, Israel. You see? These nations are going to serve us. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. We're going to own these heathen nations. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. Jerusalem, Israel, for servants and handmaids, slave men, slave women. And they shall take them captives. Whose captives they were. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. Our streets are going to be paid with gold, Israel. Gold plates, gold forks. See, all, look, all gold, everything, precious stones. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrows. It's almost over. We're going to get rest from our sorrows soon come. And from thy fear. And from the all bondage wherein thou was made to serve, man. All right? We can look, shit, man. This is right around the corner. We're going to have the best of everything. We're going to have the finest of everything, Israel. Everything, Israel. You see? Look, look. Just got to hold on. Just got to hold on. Let's get Baruch right quick and I'm going to end it. So quick through the Spirit, Lord, one of the elect is edified. Baruch chapter 4. Bear with me. Baruch chapter 4, verse 21. Be of good cheer, my children. Oh, my children, the children of Israel, cry unto the Lord. That's what we're doing now. And he will deliver you from the power in the hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. And joy has come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting. I will save you. I love reading the scripture. I love reading it, man. If I sent you out with mourning and weeping, that's like we remember 7 AD, we had the whole ass out of Jerusalem. If I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but your howl. Through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Did, did you not hear that, Israel? Joy and gladness forever, man. Joy and gladness forever, Israel. Tears of joy, like as now the neighbors of Zion and these heathen nations have seen your captivity. So shall they see shortly your salvation from our power which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. And, and, and look, look, remember the strangeness of the of your salvation, remember? They thought the only way we was going to get out of the earth is through a pine box. You see, taking a dirt nap. But the Lord said, they're going to see the strangeness of your salvation, being beamed up with what they eagerly call UFOs, which are the chariots of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. It's, it's going to be a beautiful thing. My children suffer patiently. We gotta go through what we gotta go through. Suffer patiently. The wrath that has come that has come upon you from the most high. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and tread upon his neck. So we're just sitting back, man. We're just sitting back through the spirit that you have. I should imagine everything that I'm reading is gonna come to pass, right? A new heaven and a new earth. You see? Let's get one more, and I'm going to wrap it up. It's all coming to pass, Israel. It's all coming to pass, Israel. It's all coming to pass. Let's get the one in um, Peter first. Just hit me. Just a quick scripture. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens, a new rulership, and a new earth kind of refresh what's going to refresh the earth what's going to replenish the earth what's going to take out the toxins and rid the earth of its pollutions that fire right and a new earth same earth is just going to be replenished refreshed wherein wherein dwell of righteousness and, and we're waiting on it the lord says sit back and patiently wait you see patiently wait on the salvation which shall come from from the heavenly father through his only begotten son Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17 For behold I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind meaning this rulership you see 
The Lord's going to create a new rulership, man. And a fresher, clean earth. In this age, Sleazy E's rulership won't even come to mind. You see, the, the Lord showed us how not to rule a kingdom. The Lord showed us what wickedness truly looks like, man. And what comes of it when you run a kingdom in lewdness and by wickedness, man, and by witchcraft. Nothing good comes from it. So, Lord, one of the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. We got a whole lot to look forward to. Just want to just throw something out there, man. Lord, one of the elect is edified. You know, that's so what we do these lessons for. We got a whole lot to look forward to, Israel. A new heaven and a new earth. Matter of fact, I do got one more. I'll just end it off here. Proverbs. Bear with me. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. Bear with me. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear fruit, the people mourn. Remember, the Lord said he's going to put one over it, over the earth that is profitable to the earth. We might, we might get that. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear fruit, the people mourn. We're going to rejoice soon, come. Because the Lord is going to put one over the earth that is profitable to the earth. Lord, your house shy, man. And it's going to be beautiful. Let's see if we can find that. I'm going to close out with this. This is Sirach chapter 10, verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. See, the Lord controls all things, Israel. Just know that the Lord controls all things. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, remember, he will, he will give every needful thing in due time, right? In this season, right? The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set one over, over it. So like it. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. You see? You see? Someone is going to beautify the earth. Not, not someone is going to straight up destroy the earth. The Lord said he's going to destroy them which destroy the earth, right? The Lord said he's going to put one over the earth. It's going to rule the earth. It's going to be profitable to the earth. Everything is going to rejoice. Remember Proverbs 29 and 2? I ain't going to be the dead horse. Lord, one of the elect is edified. We got a whole lot to look forward to, Israel. Thank the Lord. Shalom.